Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thanks for joining me today. So back to our regional variation in antler size that we talked about, we have 20 inch difference at five and, and older age classes. It's a big difference. What do the biologists think with the State Wildlife Agency? What do Bronson Strickland and I think? We felt like there was a, a soil nutrition relationship going on among these regions. We felt like if we could understand this regional soil nutrition relationship more completely and document it, that we would have a better understanding of the regional variation. We believe that soil quality affected forage quality, forage quality and soil quality affect land use decisions, and all of these affect uh, the expression of antler development. So let's look at soil quality and see how it varied among the three regions that we're talking about. In this case, we have regional variation in soil nutrients Kilograms per hectare, just don't worry about the units, it's just the y-axis shows from 0 to 600. And phosphorus is a really important nutrient. And you can see the phosphorus, which is indicated in blue, is uh, much higher in the delta than it is in the LERS, and it's much higher in the LERS than it is in the lower coastal plain. Potassium is also an important uh, nutrient. And again, it's much higher, the potassium represented by the black histogram, much higher in the delta than it is in the LERS, but the LERS is much higher than the lower coastal plain. So we know that soil nutrients vary quite dramatically among the three regions. So if soil quality and the nutrients within the soil vary, our next question was, well, what about the forage quality? Do the forage nutrients differ in the same pattern. Here we're looking at the regional variation in forage nutrients. We sampled uh, a large number of deer forages in the three different regions and we represent the y-axis is, is again a quantity of nutrients and we have again phosphorus and potassium and in this case where phosphorus was relatively less than potassium in the soil here it's much more prevalent in the leaf material than it is potassium, but we see a very distinct pattern in phosphorus content of the forages. In the delta, it's much higher than it is in the LERS. In the LERS, it's much higher than it is in the lower coastal plain. Phosphorus and potassium are both important nutrients. Phosphorus is even more important in the development of skeletal size, uh, bones and antler is bone so phosphorus is a critical component of antlers and so if you just looked at this figure this graph and based on the amount of phosphorus in the forages which region would you expect to have bigger boned bigger antlered deer I think it's pretty clear that you would expect them to be larger in the delta followed by the LERS followed lastly by the lower coastal plain. Now let's look at crude protein of the forages. Protein is that earlier figure I showed you, the 8% crude protein versus the 16% crude protein. Protein provides amino acids which are the building blocks of the body. So without protein, the body and the antlers of a deer cannot grow adequately. Now this figure shows uh, regional and seasonal variation in crude protein of an important deer forage called greenbrier. The left side is the percentage of crude protein and, and the uh, blue histogram represents springtime crude protein and then the black histogram represents summertime crude protein of greenbrier. And we see in the delta about 21% crude protein in greenbrier during the spring. In the Lurse Hills, in the springtime, that Greenbrier has about 15% crude protein. And in the lower coastal plain, it's down around 11%. Of 
So the soils in these different regions are better able to produce forage for the deer that is higher in overall crude protein in the delta than it is in the Lurse, and it's higher in the Lurse than it is in the lower coastal plain. So we've shown now that the regions differ in terms of soil nutrients. We've shown that the forages differ in the minerals within the forages and the forages differ in the amount of crude protein. So we have protein, the building blocks of muscle and uh, bone, all the tissues in the body, and the minerals are the uh, part that hardens out the antlers and supports our bodies by having strong bones. So building block in the protein, mineralization to make hard bones. It does vary among the three regions in the same fashion as the body and antler size varied. So let's look at the third possible explanation for regional differences. It's land use. We thought that because of the difference in, differences in soils, there are different land uses. So we did an analysis of uh, vegetation and land use in Mississippi. This map on the left shows the land classification or that what's being used or what, what the land consists of across the state of Mississippi. The uh, state map on the right hand side shows 203 different properties from which we had antler size measurements of bucks at two years of age. So 203 different properties with at least 20 bucks where we had the antler score at two years of age. And we wanted to look at the relationship between the land use and vegetation types and antler size at two years of age. Let's see what we learned. This antler vegetation model represents the delta. And what's important here is to see the, the uh, Class of the land classification or vegetation classifications that were important in the model. There was agriculture, which had a very positive effect, managed pines, which had a negative effect, and then hardwoods, which had a negative effect. And the agriculture, the positive effect of agriculture, and, and a big part of the agriculture in the Delta is soybeans. Soybeans are very high in protein content and you remember from the earlier uh, aerial photo there's a lot of ag fields in the Delta. So the deer have access to a lot of soybean agriculture and so that allows them to grow bigger antlers. The managed pine and the hardwoods are both negatively associated with antler size and in this case I need to tell you a little bit about how they manage timber in the Delta. And the bottom line is they don't manage it a lot. Most of the, the timber lands in the Delta are closed canopy. And so they're not really providing sunlight or allowing sunlight to get to the ground level, which is where the forage needs to be produced. So in these closed canopy forests, there's not much food. So what this uh, relationship shows is that about 42% of the variation and antler size among the properties that were located in the Delta could be explained by the relative amounts of agriculture and the relative amounts of timber, the closed canopy timber. 42% of the variation, that's a lot of variation when you're looking at an ecological system like this. 42%, that's really a, a huge amount of variation. And we were very surprised to see that level of variation, but we we're also pleased that, that we're able to capture that much. So the Delta, it's all about positive effect of soybeans in particular, and the negative effect of timber, closed canopy timber. Looking at the Lurse Hills, we see that uh, two variables came out again, the agriculture in a positive way and the timber in a negative way. 47% of the, of the variation among the properties in the Lurse Hills was explained by agriculture 
relative amounts of agriculture and relative amounts of timber. The more agriculture they had, again, probably soybeans, the larger the antlers. The more timber they had, probably closed canopy timber, the smaller the antlers were. 47% of the variation. If you had a lot of agriculture and soybeans, you had bigger antlers. If you had a lot of timber that had closed canopy, you had smaller antlered bucks at two years of age. Looking at the last model I want to talk about, it's the lower coastal plain, that sandy soil region that uh, predominantly made up of, of managed pines. And here we found a, only a single variable of importance. That's the relative amount of managed pines. There's just not much agriculture in the lower coastal plain because the soil quality is too low. It won't support uh, adequate agriculture production. So what they do is grow a lot of, a lot of pine trees. In this case, almost 70% of the variation among properties, which is a phenomenal amount of the variation to, to be able to capture, almost 70% is related to the relative amount of managed pine stands on the property. So if you only had a small amount of managed pine, your antler size tended to be bigger, whereas if you had a lot, a high proportion of your property in managed pines, then the antler size of two-year-old bucks tended to be smaller. So this was pretty dramatic uh, land use uh, research. We showed that regional antler variation was clearly associated with land use decisions. What the, the landowners were doing with their land affected the antler size of the deer on their property. In the Delta, the area in red, it was all about agriculture and the more soybeans you were growing, the bigger the antlers. In the blue area indicated, uh, indicating the, the Lurse Hills, uh, again, it was about positive impacts from agriculture and soybeans and negative effects of a closed canopy timber stand. And in the lower coastal plain, uh, represented in yellow, it was all about the uh, relative amount of timber, closed canopy timber, the more you had, the smaller the antlers. So in this series of analyses and research projects, we showed that soil quality affected forage quality, which was associated with land use. And really, we showed that nutrition, the potential nutrition obtained by deer among the three different regions, in our minds, clearly affected body size and antler size and affected you know, how big the deer grew. And in this case, it was affecting the expression of their genetic potential. We felt that uh, we had shown pretty conclusively that deer in the lower coastal plain, bucks in the lower coastal plain, were growing smaller antlers because of lower amounts of nutrition compared to the, the Lurse Hills, compared to the Delta.